Now, you may not like it, but this is, in fact, what peak male physique looks like. This, this is what I've been aiming for this entire time. Hello and welcome back to our PAL World Adventures. You may notice that I have got myself some new clothes to start things off today. That is because I have been losing my mind breeding these chillets for the past 15 hours or so. But we do in fact have a lot of chillets. As at the end of last episode, I did in fact say that I would go ahead and grab ourselves the strongest chillet that we can make realistically at this point. I want to make the ultimate chillet. That is still in progress. We have so far a lot of chillets. Okay, there is a lot of chillets in this box. I'm going to need 116 of those. So in the meantime, I was losing my mind uh, making catrus caps and running around naked doing uh, silly stuff. But it has led to me hitting level 42, which means we do have access to the next thing we need for our PAL box upgrade, which is the production assembly line 2. Uh, and electric cores and stuff like that, and the pump action shotgun. We already have an upgraded version of the shotgun. So we can make ourselves the production assembly line too. And this episode, I want to go ahead and while the chillets are finishing up and getting ready to be condensed into the ultimate chillet, which we will do later on in this episode, I want to start things off by going to the wildlife sanctuaries. We have the wildlife sanctuary over here, which we have waypointed and we can see the uh, corner of. We have the one that has our base in, which is probably the one that we'll start at. And we have this one over in the desert that we saw in the last episode. These should have all of the super rare pals in the game. And should allow us to basically finish out our pal deck, actually. Other than, you know, the couple of bosses that we start to do, like Anubis and Menesting. But other than that, it pretty much finishes up all of our pal deck, which is kind of cool. So we are going to go ahead and start with all of that once I put my armor back on, I guess. And I have obviously been using this base as a... A teleport point realistically but now it's finally time to go ahead and have this thing actually be a useful teleport point we'll probably destroy this base when we're ready look ready to leave before we take it to the next base and we'll just use this as a a quick little way back here over and over again we saw before when we came here as this is the one that we have visited already we saw Jormantide ignis which i would like to capture one of as it would immediately be level 41 which i feel like would be a nice powerful thing to add to the team as we are still a little bit of a dragon tamer uh, oh, we also have Menesting over here. So that's not just from bosses. Uh, we also have something running off over there in the distance, which is an Incineram knock. So there's a lot of things here that we haven't caught yet. We may be a criminal for doing this, and that's okay. But let's go ahead and get our stuff started. Let's fart. Let's, let's fart. Let's start fighting <laughs> this Incineram knock and see if we can get it a little bit weakened. We do have a ton of Ultra Spheres for today. So hopefully uh, that will lead to us being able to get these things nice and easily. Ow, fireball hurts. Quiverne just lost half its health to one hit, which is terrifying, actually. I do not want to be missing attacks. That is incredibly scary. It's just, he's running so fast. Oh, and the menacing is aggro. Well, we're starting off with action today. I hope everyone likes action um, and missing. Action and missing is what we're starting off with today, which is a little bit awkward. Is the Ormantide Ignis also going to get aggroed? Oh god, it is, isn't it? Well, this is, um... The Incineran knocked was caught. That's cool. That's cool. This is going to kill me, unless I use... My incredible dodging skills. I was going to say, unless I use my Ragnarok as bait to take a hit for me real quick. But it wasn't needed, apparently. Can I launch a ball down there? I think it'll hit. No. Damn. All right, chill. It's going to dodge that. We're going to hit this menace thing, hopefully. Nice. Okay. Gormatide Ignis is just chilling down there. Yeah. Oh my god, my dodging skills are on point today, apparently. Yeah. Now that we've started. Um, this this is a nice chaotic start, okay? <laughs> we, do get the, we do get the catch on the menace thing. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to actually get on chill it. We're going to try and throw an Icicle Cutter at this Yormantide Ignis. Big Freeze, maybe? Big Freeze? No, Big Freeze. Throw an Icicle Cutter and then dismount so that we get the duplicate attacks. It is going to be neutral, but that's fine. We do have our own Yormantide, which we could use to fight. Um, I'm worried that it's going to KO it, though, or launch it into the Abyss. Yeah, that was kind of obvious, really, huh? That was kind of obvious. That was why I said worried we were going to KO it. Well, that was a hectic start. Um, it was kind of fun, though. 
<laughs> oh, we have another Yormontide right over there. Okay, it's not over yet. I did make the Yormontide saddle because, I mean, look at this guy. He's a huge menace. Why wouldn't I do that? Um, so let's go ahead. Let's start with a Hydro Laser. <laughs> this is going to do so much damage. That's a pretty good start. That's pretty good. We can Aqua Gun. I don't think that Incineram is going to aggro. I don't know if it's aggroed or not. I don't know if they're like old buddy buddy over here in the in this land. But let's throw ourselves the ball and let's try and catch ourselves a Yormontide Ignis at a decent level, shall we? The fireball launched so quickly. Also, I am missing so many balls today. Christ, I need to actually like aim. But we do get it caught, okay. Incineram knocked is something that we just caught. It specifically targets baby pals, taking them back to its territory. Oh Christ. One can only imagine the profound despair of the parent pal whose child has been taken away. That's horrifying. Oh, and the court menacing. Right. Being made of pure energy, its insides are completely hollow. This pal crams still living prey into its hollow body where it absorbs them. Hellish screams of pain can often be heard coming from inside this pal. That's kind of messed up. I kind of like it. Oh, we also have War Sect over here at a higher level. But again, we've already caught the alpha version of that as a boss. So I'm I'm kind of happy with that. I just want to see what new things we can catch for right now. <laughs> Oops, all Wumpo. <laughs> really, it's just Wumpo. Oh, we almost tied together. Hello, what are you? Oh, Verdash. Okay, well, I'm not seeing any more new things. I say as I just see the Verdash. I'm willing to go to the next one already. We caught, we caught like three things here. I want to see if there's anything else in the other ones as well. I don't want to just keep refreshing this one over and over. I've only refreshed this one about 15 times. So let's finally destroy this bird base and actually start setting it up as a teleport waypoint for us. All right, let's take a peek inside the Wildlife Sanctuary number one. Immediately something we don't have. Ache for Deer Terror. Ooh, I wonder if it's better logging than the other one. It's also only level 19. It is significantly lower level than everything else in the other area. I probably can go back to using like Gigaspheres. Oh, easily. Probably using my Megaspheres even. I think Gigaspheres will be fine. Oh, this is so much easier. I should have came here so much earlier in the playthrough. Oh, we have Pen King out in the wild? Oh, oh, okay. What else do we have around here? Well, Ake for Deer Terrors, Pen King's aggro, that's fine. I want to see if there's anything cool in the loot. Uh, nope. Honestly, I might just catch some of these, to be honest, just so we can get some levels. Oh, we also have Azerobe over here. Again, not as a boss. Makes sense. Makes sense. Kind of cool. Uh, I do need to catch more of those as well. Azerobe is one of those pals that I really like. However, I don't think I'm going to use anymore. I was actually considering having this as part of my like final dragon team. But now, I mean, we have Yormantide. It's going to take a lot of convincing for me to use an Azerobe over a Yormontide, you know? But it is still very cool. Alright, we have set up our pal box. So now we can warp away and warp back again to refresh the area and see if there's anything new. Is there something under there? Or is that another Pen King or something? It's another Pen King, isn't it? Oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Wait, you could actually get in trouble for this? I never got in trouble in the other area. Wait, 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 wait. I can get in trouble for this? There's no way I managed just to go through that whole area in the Wildlife Sanctuary 2 without getting in trouble, but this one I'm going to get in trouble for. <gasps> oh, we have Fatalia over here. That's kind of cool. Um, I mean, last time there was no negative for me just KOing the guards, so I'm going to just KO the guards again. I hope that doesn't lead to any issues. like is a meteor buddy <laughs> so, sorry bro <laughs> more spawning huh rather than me clearing it i'm worried this is gonna end up like a gta wanted level 
and I'm just going to make it higher and higher by killing them. So I think I'm just going to leave and come back and we will see if it disappears on its own or not, I guess. I want to see if there's more things that I can catch <sighs> over here. Trespassing, I'm not too afraid of level 10s. It's if the trespassing stays when we go to the next one, that's when it might be scary because I imagine the one in the desert is going to be way high level. Oh, we have Vela out here as well. Oh, I think Vela's kind of ugly. So I want to see what it drops. That's so rude. <laughs> what I just did was so rude. Uh, tomato seeds and low-grade medical supplies. Not what I would have expected. Oh, hello! Grizzbowl. I can get tower bosses from these? Oh, maybe I want to go and refresh that second one a bit more, actually. Um, I am catching you, though. That's for sure. Can I just Giga Spear you nice and easy? It might be nice and easy. 78% is pretty good. We have ourselves a Grizzbolt. I thought we were going to have to breed for tower bosses. But if I can catch them, then what I said before in the other episodes about me breeding uh, stuff like Lylene because we've already defeated it, maybe I'll scrap that. Maybe I'll look for a Lylene in one of these towers. Towers? In one of these wildlife sanctuaries. <gasps> oh, Elphitron. I wonder if that's because it's nighttime. I've been refreshing the area a little bit um, since it's become night, if I can get any stamina back. Uh, I've been refreshing the area since it's been night to see if there were any specific nighttime spawns. This is the first time I've seen an Elphidron. There is no guarantee that that is because it is nighttime. It might just be a bit rarer, but either way, 98% catch rate, don't mind if I do. Don't get me wrong though, even though it's nighttime, there are still pen kings everywhere. Oh, it went away while I'm still in the area. I was kind of hoping it would stay a bit longer so I could see if I would have level 10s chase me into the next wildlife sanctuary, but that does not seem to be like it's going to be the case. Another Elphidron, even though it is now turning to morning. I think I've seen basically everything that's here. I could probably list them. Uh, Pen King, Azarobe, Vitalia, Elphidron, Aquadir, Terra, Grisbol and the weird bug thing, Veil it. Uh, I, I feel like I've seen everything here. If I'm missing something, then maybe we'll come back here at some point. But I'm I'm pretty happy with what we've seen here. I'm willing to go to the next one. I'm, I'm also just very excited to go to the desert one and see what's over here. So I think we'll call it there for this sanctuary for now. This isn't a bad place to have a base, by the way, because there is coal and ore up on that top part. You just have to be worried about the fact that you're technically trespassing all of the time. All right, we are approaching Wildlife Sanctuary number three, and I'm slightly worried about this one. I feel like this one could actually be filled with just the highest level pals in the game, as... Oh, there's the pop-up. There's, there's the scary text. Okay, as this is the highest number Wildlife Sanctuary, the first one had level 20s. The second one had level 40s. That means it has to go higher than level 40, and the only thing higher than level 40 really is somewhere up to 50. So I'm imagining this is going to be a pretty scary place. So I might actually want to be cautious, for example, of those, um, of those other lads over there at the, uh, PDIF Elites. They, they might mess us up. We have Fenglope over here, which we have done a boss for somewhere over on the left. Yep, at level 25, so we have one of those. I'm gonna start off by seeing if there's just anything that we don't already have. And then maybe I'll start wondering about other things. Hello! You're not a Ragnarok. No, you're a Phalaris. Ooh. Is there a knock we got at the other wildlife sanctuary? I don't have a Phalaris yet. Uh, let's go ahead. Get Yormantide out, I guess. And slap it with a Hydro Laser. I also see a Bushi walking around just behind it. That Hydra Laser did incredibly good damage. Hopefully it can still live an Aqua Gun, I hope. Aqua Gun. Nice. That is a Gigasphere. That is not what I want to be using, but it did stop the attack at least. So there's that. I missed my Ultra Sphere because I'm horribly bad at aiming these today. I think that is a Homing Sphere launcher type of thing that would aim for me, which might be nice if I'm ever on the back of something giant like Yormantide, I guess. 
they do get the second wobble and we do get ourselves a Phalaris. Uh, which I will read. We should be reasonably safe here on the back of Yormontide. Where is Phalaris? So it's past 90s? Level uh, number 105 in the PAL deck. That's way later than I thought. Level 3 Kindling, level 3 Transporting. Uh, when it finds prey, it unleashes a whirlwind of flames, burning the entire area to ash. Valeris's breath is known for its pleasing scent. Odd. Odd. We also caught the Grizzball. With a friendly smile and a hearty physique, it is docile. Towards one it recognizes as a partner. For reasons unexplained, its personality undergoes a drastic change when wielding a minigun. That's true. Now that we've caught that, we can look up what level we can actually get Grizzbolt with a minigun. It is like the poster child of the game. Level 40. I mean, we have to try it at some point, right? We may as well unlock it now. That's something we're going to try. We can all agree it's something we're going to try. Just like Relaxorus's missile launcher. It's something I'm going to try. Uh, I don't see Phalaris's saddle. Oh, yes I do. Level 38. So we could, we could use that. We could see how fast that is in comparison to like... Quivern and Ragnarok, which our Quivern with the movement speed increases is roughly as fast as a Ragnarok with no movement speed increases. Uh, however, Quivern feels like it has double the stamina of Ragnarok, so it it's kind of a trade-off. Uh, overall, I, I don't know which is better, but we could try Phalaris as well and see how fast that is. Alright, back to looking for pals we don't have, though. Alright, let's see what we have here in the evening. More Incineram knocked. You'd think they'd only spawn at night, considering they have knocked in the name, but apparently not. More Bushi, more Fenglo. Fenglo. Ooh, that's what I wanted to see. That's what I wanted to see. We have ourselves a Lylene. Uh, at level 43, I would hope it could live a Fireball. So I'm just going to start things off with a Fireball. It can. It can. Uh, then we'll Arrow... Uh, we are going to try and dodge that as best as we can, because that is a water-type move, and I am afraid of it. Single Tornado. Oh, there's the other one. It just popped into existence. Uh, and we have ourselves our Ultra Spheres. Give me a Lylene, please. I really like Lylene. Please. I would like one Lylene. Nice. Okay, we do get that second wiggle. It's always hard stuttering at the second wiggle. Spirit Emperor. Docile pal, full of love, it watches over small pals who have lost their parents. It uses a full power solar blast. Hold on, I can get rid of that. To discipline naughty pals. Okay, okay. If that's the description of the normal one, it's like, oh, it's full of love. I'm curious if Lily knocked is like, it has no more love. Prepare to die. <laughs> I kind of want to see, but uh, a level 49 boss is a little bit beyond us right now. But I am excited to see Lylene and Lylene knocked. Hello! Shadow Beak. That might be our new mount. That's cool. I like that. Why has it got... Like... I don't want to say it because it compares it to Pokemon, but like an Arceus ring. Why does it have an Arceus ring? I Fireball. Spin out fireball. Uh, it can probably live a flame tornado, right? Please don't get caught in it and take too much damage. That's okay. Hello, what are you doing? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What in the Erd Tree avatar from Elden Ring attack was that? Okay, all right. I love this thing. Get in the ball. Okay. I, I, am, I need to see more of what that is. That's Nightmare Ball. And it has the, the Dark Spirit Flame attack. Okay. Hello, Shadow Beak. Please get in the bowl. Nice. Nice. It is an artisan. So if it's good at working on something as well, that'll be nice. Uh, not really a combat uh, pal just yet, though. But oh, I need to read that. I need to read that. It said born in the depths of insanity. We're still missing whatever 106 is. And 96 and 98. But other than that, we are almost done with the pal deck. We're missing... Three more pals that we haven't seen, at least. We haven't caught Anubis, obviously, or the legendaries, but we're still missing three that we haven't seen. Shadow Beak. Born from the depths of insanity, its very existence should not be. 
Having lost all genetic ties to other pals, one wonders if it could even still be considered a pal. Is this like a Mewtwo situation? Modified DNA. Yes, okay. Can be ridden as a flying mount, enhances dark attacks while mounted. Level 1 gathering. Well, what I said before about it being, you know, artisan. That doesn't help. <laughs> okay, got it. That's not helpful at all. Uh, I did see another Lileen walking around. Is that still here? Can I still catch that? Where did it go? Oh, there it is. Ooh, okay. All right. Yeah, this is, we're going to start saving our balls for if something else spawns because that's a lot of balls used on this Lyleen. That does not make me super happy, but we do catch it. Is it good at least? It is an artisan. That might actually be very good. I imagine Lyleen had something good in like planting or gathering or something. Level four planting and level two gathering. Okay, that is something that can work on the base. An artisan of that is actually really nice for the planting. Because we're using a level 3 planting bronze cherry at the moment. So that's just an upgrade. Also, level 3 handiwork. Oh. Oh. Okay. We got the volcano boys over here. And a Phalaris. All right. We got all the fire types out here today. Blazimer and Astagon. I don't have a super high amount of balls left after I caught a couple of Lyleens. But we should be able to get these, I guess. Uh, I would like, I guess the Astagon is coming over to me. I would like the Blazem at first, preferably. It was the one that I was going to fight, which is why I got on Jormantide. Um, it doesn't seem like we're going to be able to have so much luck with that. Let's, uh, I guess we can just Fireball with Dragonhawk. It does a lot of damage. It gets them burned, which makes them easier to catch, funnily enough. Let's, uh, let's see how this goes. Between Fireball these and then we'll dismount so that they can be fired again let's see if we can get this thing weakened that's pretty weak not bad not bad i do also have a shotgun which to be honest might be good for weakening a dark type please don't kill okay uh 20 is okay it's okay it's not perfect if i throw like <laughs> a handgun shot each time i'm sure it'll be okay i can afford to use five balls oh Second ball. Nice. The savage beast born of the abyss. Thou shall not stand before the beast. Thou shall not heed the beast. That's a pretty cool dex entry, actually. There is a Bushi angry at me, which I don't want to be angry at me right now. I want to go get that blaze emote which walked all the way over here. That's the same one, level 42. Uh, so we're going to go all the way over here. Get ourselves stuck in a tree as we do. Uh, nice. Nice and classic. Let's, uh, let's Yormantide this thing, shall we? Laser. <laughs> Oops. Laser. Burp. Yeah, I was worried that was going to KO. I think it can still live in Aqua Gun. Aqua Gun isn't strong. Um. Oh. <laughs> as we just kick it around. I'm going to... Oh. Ahem. Ten Flame Organs. <laughs> it's not... It's not bad. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I, I definitely meant to uh to catch that. I thought it would live one more hit. Uh, oopsie. Well, I guess we're gonna do another refresh to try and get another Blazemer, I guess. Oh, you're not Flaming Mutt Boy, but you are also something I don't have. Or Zerk, Electric Dragon. There's a lot of dragons in this game, actually. I am very happy to be a, a dragon tamer right now. We're gonna set you on fire. Uh, that did a lot of damage to you, actually. I feel like a flame arrow and an ultra ball is probably all we can do. 40% catch rate. That's pretty good. Is it going to be that easy? It's going to be that easy. That's what I like to see. Lord of Lightning. Really? It sends electricity into its foe's wounds, roasting them from the inside out. That's kind of messed up. I love it. Oh, it's also the, the 106. Right, that makes sense. We don't have any pals to unlock. Uh, it sends electricity into its foe's wounds. I already read that. Flies between Orzerk and in the blink of an eye. Uh, Astagon, which we already got, and Blazemer. So we've completely uncovered the pal deck in this episode, right? We have now seen every single pal. Uh, the only things we have left to catch are Blazemer, which we know we can spawn in this zone that we're in right now. Anubis, which we've seen as a boss at least that we can go and grab. 
Lyleen knocked, and then the legendaries. We are pretty much done with completing the decks, which is kind of crazy to say. I know there's a couple of other forms. Like, I think specifically the one that comes to my mind that we don't have is Elphidron. Uh, Elphidron has a Elphidron Aqua form that I know about, because uh, when I was looking at good water dragon types after we caught Yormontide to see if there was any reason not to just use Yormontide, I saw Elphidron Aqua as a thing alongside Azerobe and um, Relaxorus. There's a lot of water dragons actually in this game. Uh, but Elphidron Aqua is one that we might have to breed. There might be some other ones in here that we might have to breed as well to get their type alternate form. But as far as standard forms of pals go, we are pretty much done. Yeah. I, am I hearing? Oh god, I'm hearing a lucky over here. This is going to be so strong. What are you? A level 50 Fanglope. Oh no, <laughs> this might be a catra situation. I don't know if we're going to be able to catch this. 0.03% with the back hit. Okay, we're about to get ourselves into a brawl, huh? I mean, I'm going to take it. Oh, I can't even take the back hit. That, that is going to be tough. Uh, I tried to dodge it by dismounting. It did not work like that. Um, I have my shotgun. It is time to use it. <laughs> this is going to be a powerful thing, globe, at least. Yeah. Um, I am afraid for my life, to be honest. More so than anything else right now. I feel like I just want to keep myself alive more than I want to try and weaken it. As this is going to be a bit of a battle of attrition. And if we can get it low enough, we might be able to get it in an Ultra Sphere. I don't even know if an Ultra Sphere can catch a level 50. I don't know if there's like a cutoff point. Getting burns would be huge because it would do some scent damage. It's not doing anything and that scares me. Okay, that's that's kind of what I was waiting for. Uh, we have our laser. We are not going to let Yormontide get hit by an Ice type move. That is not happening today. Uh, excuse me. What did he get hit by? Oh no. Yeah, I do feel like Burn is probably our best bet, though. So Ragnarok is what I want to use. Does it just have massive cooldowns because its moves are crazy? Is that what's happening? It seems to be chilling out a lot. I'm actually fine with Yormontide getting hit like that. That's That hit so many times. That was kind of cool. Um, I'm going to throw Ragnarok out and hopefully Ragnarok can get a Burn. As, like I said, Burn is kind of huge. Uh, that, oh, there we go, there we go, nice. Honestly, those burn ticks are doing more than my shotgun pellets, so there's actually just no point in me having my shotgun out. I may as well have the grappling hook out to dodge things. That would probably make more sense. I wasn't ready for this battle. I just wanted a blazer and then I wanted to leave. I don't know if I like getting <laughs> luckies at this high of a level. I don't think I like it. <laughs> it's, a it's a little bit stressful for me. Um... <laughs> If we catch this, though, we have a powerhouse in the back, ready for when we hit max level. Especially if it's going to have any other good traits. Hopefully it gets, like, muscle head. If it gets muscle head and lucky, that's, like, an end game power right there. We're going to have this come back. So it doesn't get hit by all of those moves. The night is passing. I don't know if I want to cut any of this out because I feel like I could die at any time. I feel like if I get hit by one attack, like that, for example. I feel like if I get hit by one attack wrong, this fight is over. So I want to try and keep it all in. I want another burn. That's what I want. I should probably be ready to grappling hook to dodge attacks, actually. Especially when it's looking at me like it is now. It's terrifying. Try and use the ore in the way to maybe block it or something. Uh, dang it, Ragnarok. I need you to burn him. It's the only way we're going to weaken him somewhat consistently. Yes, there we go. Okay, another burn. Huge. And a fireball. Huge. That's good damage. Who's that at? That is it, Ragnarok. I did not recall in time. That is my first big mistake in this fight. Well, I guess I got Yormontide hit by an ice head move, which kind of sucks. But what are you doing? Uh-oh. 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 
If I say uh-oh, it makes me more likely to dodge. I did not manage to dodge that, despite trying to grappling hook, because I was too far away from the wall, I think. Uh, I wonder if I could try and catch it at that range. I wonder. Maybe after this fireball. 1% catch chance. One percent, and I missed a ball. Oh, six <laughs> percent. Okay, I'm at the point where I'm just gonna throw all my upstairs, and we'll see what happens. Well, am I? Okay, maybe we can get Chillip to freeze. Chillip might freeze. Chillip, please freeze. Freeze? No. Okay, if we're doing fours though, I'm fine with Chillip staying out. Chillip's not gonna KO it. Freeze. Freeze. Yes? Okay. 8%. You know what? I'm just gonna throw the balls. <laughs> if we catch it, we catch it. If we don't, we don't. Yes! Yes! Oh my god, it's swift. Wait, that's our ground mount now. That's actually our ground mount. Alright, we're making a Fenglope saddle. That was actually incredible. Okay. I... I... <laughs> I actually don't know if I care about the blaze mode anymore. I don't know if I care. Well, it's right there. Okay, fine. I, I okay. <laughs> if it wasn't right there, I wouldn't have cared. But you know what? It's right here. We'll give it a go. Let me laser you from here. Please don't get out of my range. That's tragic. That's really unfortunate. Moved out of our range. And it's moving towards other pals. That's that kind of sucky. Um, let's throw an Aqua Burst out. Good damage. We know for a fact that we can go for another Aqua Gun at this range. Maybe two, but I am cautious now, obviously. No, we can definitely do another one. Okay, I'm just gonna throw a ball, mostly to avoid the attack. 20% chance. Well, 23, and we have a ton of balls. I'm just gonna throw balls. Another easy capture. Okay, I will take it. The Flame Emperor and a Masochist. Okay. With that, though, it is time to go ahead. It is time to head back. Uh-oh. 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 It is time to head back. I don't know who spotted me in particular, but they're level 10s again, which I'm not too afraid of. I feel like if they come to our base, they're just going to get annihilated. So I'm just going to go back to base and let them die like it was a raid fight, I guess. As we have Chillets. We have Chillets to deal with. So, <laughs> while they do their thing, <laughs> let's go ahead <laughs> and read Blaze of its description, shall we? Legends say it was born during a volcanic eruption. A strange group even claims that this continent is laid upon the back of a giant Blaze of it. I don't believe that one. I don't believe that one. And we also got ourselves... Oh, right, the Fenglope, which we already have the description of, but I do want to see it. Oh god, my... Oh, right. These are going to be everywhere because um, my my PC box is not good right now. Uh, there it is. The Lucky Fenglope. Lucky and Swift. With Dragon Meteor, Blizzard Spike, and Aqua Burst. Not the moveset I would have expected it to have, but kind of cool. With Lucky and Swift. Nice. Nice. Uh, and we can ride Fenglope. I think this is one of the faster mounts in the game, actually. So having it swift and lucky is pretty good. Pretty good. For right now, though, it is, in fact, chill at time. My final three chiller eggs should be ready to go now. And we should have ourselves 116 spare chillets to go ahead and fuse into the strongest one that we have. We have any other with the four perfect traits I was trying for? No. Okay. All right. It is time to explain my chill it process. So, we have 90 here that did not get the four traits that I was going for. These are spare sacrificial chillets. As when we condense the chillet into the ultimate chillet, I'm going to say chillet a lot, by the way, we're going to need 116 spares. There is four tiers of pal condensing. The first one will require four pals. The second will require 16, the third will require 32, and the fourth will require 64. So in total, I will need 116 chillets fused into the strongest chillet. At the moment, that is seeming like it is going to be this one, because this game has IVs. 
very briefly for anyone that does not know what an IV is, if you never got that deep into Pokemon, it means every pal is born with a slight variation in its attack stat. For example, these two right here, all right, these are the exact same traits, Hooligan, Ferocious, Lucky, and Musclehead for a plus 80% attack increase, the exact same traits, however, one has five points of attack higher than the other. That is because it has a slightly higher IV value. Think about it in humans, how some humans are just naturally better at some things. That applies to pals too. And it is a value between, I think, 0 and 30%. Uh, so you can have an up to 30% attack increase. The worst that I have is this 297 attack chiller. The highest that I have is this 318 attack chiller. The reason these are all level 10 is I got all of my chillets that had these four traits that gave me the plus 80% attack boost. I got all of them to level 10 so I could see the difference between their stats a little bit better. However, I do still have six chillet that ended up with 318 attacks specifically. So I think what I'm about to do is I'm about to take these chillets out, level them up to level, let's say, 15, and see if there is a bigger difference between them. If not, I'm going to take this one because it has a higher HP value than the others. All of these other five have 1,012 HP. This chillet has 1,071 HP. So, at the moment, this chillet is definitely my prime candidate for having everything else get fused into it, as all, obviously all of the others will disappear when they get condensed. So this is my prime candidate right now. If someone does manage to jump ahead by like two or three attack points, I might use that one instead because at the end of the day, I want high big attack number rather than survivability because it's funnier that way. All right, I quickly went and got them all to level 15 and they all have the exact same stat still, which means one of the parents probably had this exact IV stat and it got passed down to them. And it doesn't seem like it's a bad stat either when it was like 21 points ahead of uh, the other chillet that got the worst stat. So I'm, I'm under the impression this is a decent attack stat. I think I could use a calculator to figure it out, but honestly, I'm not that invested just yet. Uh, this is a single player game. If I ever play on a big server, then I might start caring a little bit more about IVs and trying to like min-max things. But for right now, this is our chillet. This guy right here is going to be our prime chillet. We're going to move him to a separate box. <laughs> Funnily enough, I have other chillets in this box, but we're going to move him to this box. This is prime chillet. All right, this chillet I'm keeping because it was the one that we have leveled up and I want to make sure that we still have that one. Uh, but this chillet right here, let's go ahead and start condensing. I have added our condenser back around the back of my house, so no one knows what is happening. The rest of my pals will be none the wiser to the absolute massacre that is about to happen, because uh, all of these chillets are about to be eliminated. <laughs> so this one, base pal. Boom. Goodbye to many, many chillets all of a sudden. Our first four are going to disappear to increase our attack by a mere 10 points. A mere, mere 10. Our attack was not 215. Am I on the wrong chiller? No, our attack is 387. I guess that's our stats before the passive skills are taken into account. And 215 plus 80%, 387. That checks out. That checks out. Uh, okay, so our base stat is going up by 10. All right. All right. That's fine. I was just making sure it was the right chillet. Uh, all right. These chillets, these first four, disappear. Gone. This chillet, buffed again. The next set. number increases 16 chillets eliminated boom our pal becomes stronger but we aren't done oh we aren't done oh we go again we eliminate even more chillets stronger And finally, boxes worth of chillets 
must be eliminated. We start at the weakest. The weakest must be removed. As we have exactly enough chillets. <laughs> okay. I'm glad that I counted right through this whole process, actually. I'm glad that I have the right amount. But we buff our chillet once again. This condensation should roughly boost us by, like... I mean, it was like 40 extra attack. It's a decent increase. It's a decent increase. Also increases our mount level, which might increase the damage while we're mounted as well, and it'll increase our HP. It also increases our skill levels, which obviously isn't as important because this is our battle mount. But we are condensed. Boom. Condensation complete. Let's go and take a look at what 387 has become. Our 387 attack chillet has become 464. And you might think, well, that's not that crazy. First of all, we aren't done. All right, there is one more step, and that is at this beautiful statue of power, which means it is time to enhance the attack power even more of this chillet. I hope we have enough souls at least to get the attack to max, because I don't know how many large pal souls we have, but this is another 30% increase if we have enough, which we do to get our attack to 603. I would like to remind you that our base attack before doing any of these increases was 215. We have nearly tripled our attack stat thanks to our passives and all of these boosts being combined. This thing, when appropriately leveled, is going to be an actual monster. <laughs> For reference, our bronze cherry at level 40, 488 attack, and that's with hooligan, that's with a stat increase. Ooh, our quivern, 580 attack. Our Jormantide, 567 attack. And our level 15 chillet has 603. We've made a monster. I would love to know what you would name your own chiller in this situation. I'm going to think long and hard in between episodes about what I want to call this thing. Suggestions are open as always. I would love to hear any suggestions for names. I might have come up with one by the time of the comment. Don't feel hurt if your comment is not chosen. But I am open to suggestions. They can always be renamed, I think. Um, so this chiller, an actual beauty. An actual beauty has been made here today. This thing is an actual monster. Obviously, not fully leveled yet. I will work on the getting this chiller nice and leveled up. And we will see just how powerful it is in the next episode. For right now, though, I do feel like this has been a great successful episode. We've checked out all of the wildlife sanctuaries. Uh, I'm probably going to leave this base over here in this sanctuary until we're ready to go ahead and fight some of the tougher bosses and then I might actually just use it as a teleport waypoint that I can just have outside the boss arenas so we can get back to them quickly. Same with like legendaries. I imagine we can just place it down as a waypoint somewhere nearby to get back to them quickly which seems like a smart idea. But for right now that is where we are going to wrap things up for today with this beautiful beautiful chill -up. If you guys have enjoyed this episode leave a like down below hit that subscribe button and if I ever do bye.